All right. First thing first. First thing first. Uh, follow our Twitter. We have been running. Ah, uh, I see. I, I see a yes over there. So I assume this is gonna be a good midnight. By the way, we are like twelve o'clock over here. So it, it's not going. It's not going to be a very fun time. You know, without coffee. All right. Uh, follow our Twitter, and then uh, we're gonna back for star later on. You know, GitHub star. So as usual. During HITB lockdown 001, we back for star. 002, we back for star. And Cyber Week, we got to back for star. So yeah, get used to it. All right. So uh, welcome to the series. Okay. And then, uh, well, this year is our our third time in Hack in the Box. So for, for, for this year. Okay. Uh, we are not having a fun time for this year. So we hope to be in Amsterdam. We couldn't. Do it. We. I. I hope I can go back to Malaysia and 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 join Singapore. I couldn't do it. And right now, Dubai. IDA seven point two is not enough. So don't worry. You you. You will not be enough. So yep. Okay. I I will tell you why. Uh, I work for JD.com. Okay, it's a Chinese based uh Amazon. All right. If you ask me, I will tell you it's way better than Amazon because I work there. I don't have any special justification, but I work there, so it's going to be better than Amazon. Uh, most of my time I'll be spending on a, a, a chilling framework. Okay. You can call it killing. You can call it chilling. Nobody really cares. Okay. And uh, during the good old days, during the good old days, like, you know, last year, last two years, I had the box. I designed the batch. So some of you guys might have seen the batch for Hack in the Box uh, 2018, 2019 for Singapore that we actually draw a cube, uh, lion face, you know, Singapore and lion always comes in a pair. Uh, and uh, Hack in the Box of Beijing. So we, we do have some uh, batch design for, uh, we do have some batch design for Hack in the Box. Okay. And then uh. This year, it's all facing the wall year, so we shared a chilling framework in a couple of our conferences. All right, and then uh, these are both of my uh, associate. All right, uh, lazy fat ass. Okay, sorry, lazy Mel. And uh, and uh, and uh, <laughs> hey, don't, hey, don't, hey, come on, come on, don't 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 bloody swear. We are in a proper. Training session, okay. You don't swear. Okay, you don't okay, talk okay, okay. bad shit. You don't okay, talk bad okay. shit, okay. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, uh. They, 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 they will be handling the uh demo, the download, and all these things. So we do receive a questions. Uh, uh, asking about uh IDA Pro version. Yes, you need to have uh, at least a seven point three, seven point four. I couldn't remember. Uh, the reason why it's uh we need some proper Python version. Which is Python three, Python two. It's not a proper Python version. All right. So, uh, uh, too bad if uh, any one of you guys uh, actually without uh, uh, without uh, IDA seven point. Uh, what was it? Seven point three and seven point four. Am I right? Seven or oh, seven point four and seven point five. Okay. Okay. Seven point four. Seven point four. So. For those without without seven point four, I assume you guys are using the pirated copy. You can say yes or no, and uh, I. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I I promise I will not report. Okay. So police will not catch you. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, make IoT reverse engineering great again. Great, great, and great again. So our friend is not there anymore, and he's not. Resting, so I decided to put his famous quote on my slides, and hopefully everybody will spend a moment of silence to remind him and his great work. So uh, we're gonna do a bit of a uh, introduction. All right. Uh, this example, this slides, it's a bit over exaggerated. Uh, during the uh during any normal conditions, uh, would not be that bad. Okay. So uh, I I just put this example in. Uh, to make this thing looks a bit uh more tougher, as in the as in uh as in uh if you wanted to do a reverse engineering on a car firmware, you need a car. That is what 
uh, that is what uh, I wanted to say in this slide. Okay, so uh, yes, the reason why I choose car as an example, it's a uh, car is always a, a, a more expensive one and you don't want to break a car during your entire uh, analysis uh, session. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, how, how, how do we fix it uh, using uh, this uh, an entire thing? It's uh, We wanted to have an emulation system, right? We'll be able to emulate most of the uh, hardware papers, uh, and then uh, uh, you don't need the actual hardware, okay? You don't need the actual hardware. Uh, if you have it, that will be an extra bonus. So if you don't have it, you're still able to emulate most of the uh, firmware's binary, okay, with virtual device uh, support okay so if you look at my back over here okay this is this is my house and uh, my, my 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 little working table without computer so uh, that is uh i i i'm obsessed with uh hardware hacking and then uh, of course uh, the, the batch design and and all these things like what i mentioned earlier so uh having able to analyze a firmware binary without having an actual hardware is always a hardware hacker's uh, uh, dream when it comes to uh, reverse engineering. And that is the major major motivation why I decide and I decided to bring a uh, uh, chilling into the uh, in, in, into the uh, picture. So yes, when come to this stage, uh, not 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 all these later conferences this year that, that I joined in, but during the early days when we started to release a uh, 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 chilling framework, uh, for example, last year, uh, uh, Zero Next uh, conference uh, in uh, Russia, when, when we finish our, when we finish our, our presentation on the stage and uh, we, when, when we walk down, there's quite a fair bit of people actually surrounding us and ask us a couple of questions. And one of the questions that we have been receiving uh, uh, during uh, conferences is uh, after our talk in the different conferences is uh, so they, they are virtual machines and how do you compare yourself with with uh, virtual machines? Okay, so the 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 easiest way to uh, look at is okay. Uh, of course, virtual machine is not something that that uh, that uh, it in in this uh, for them, but the current current uh, current uh, virtual machines are limitation it's right over here you are not able to emulate things like a uh, master boot record okay which is uh, what the shall uh, been uh, been uh, working on for for quite a while all right uh let's say cool comes uh, very low level uh the bootloader level uh edl all right uh you are talking about the anti debugging system inside uh any generic uh, operating system. You are talking about uh, having a father in a smart contract. That is what uh, that is what uh, Mr. Wu is doing. All right, and then uh, UEFI emulation. That is part of the thing that uh, not easy to be emulate using any generic uh, virtual machines. All right, and uh, you are talking about all kind of a uh, connector GPIO in your IOD firmware. Okay, of course, Raspberry is not a very good example or a logo in, in this likes, but you know what I mean. Okay, so most of the modern virtual machines are either limited or don't have this kind of uh, emulations that you will be able to do analysis, number one. And number two, we are looking at instrumentation. So these are the few things that you're going to be stuck in. So, the entire chilling framework, all right, what we wanted to do is to have a framework, not a tools, to have a framework, all right, to able to emulate the additional hardware that uh, you require. Okay, so let's say Wi-Fi connector, you know, you're look, looking at cameras, you're looking at maybe a, a, a key fob receiver, uh, a power status or whatever. And then on top of that, we wanted to build a proper instrumentation or we, we call it api right uh proper instrumentation uh, uh, uh level that you can instrument your cpu architecture uh that we support uh 80 86 mips arm arm 64 uh intel 32 bit intel 64 bit and all the way from uh, all, all the different os's so uh master boot record uh, uh, uh ms dos uefi linux freebsd mac 
uh, some part of iOS we are still looking for help, all right? And then, uh, of course, there's all, all sorts of uh, debugger that built into the, 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 the framework. And then uh, there are some other things which is not related to CPU, not related to OS, not related to debugger. That will be the extension series. So creating a malware analysis report, okay, a proper JSON report. Uh, you're talking about all sorts of uh, supporting from uh, Windows SDK. Uh, you're talking about chip sanitizer. Uh, you're talking about IDA plugins. So, so these are the things that we built using the framework. All right, and then uh, people can can uh, uh, developers uh, hackers can make use of all these instrumentations uh, uh, API to analyze the binary or even produce a proper tools on top of the framework. So uh, to cut everything short, okay, the features and functionality list is over here. So it's a complete cross-platform, cross-architecture framework. So when I say cross-platform and cross-architecture is uh, with a little bit hiccup, okay, with a little bit hiccup, Killing Framework can work on top of uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, so BSD, uh, and, and then uh, it's either on x86, x86, 64, ARM, MIPS, and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, we support a multiple file format together with uh, OS, like what I uh, showed you just now, all right? And then uh, the entire emulation is inside uh, a proper sandbox uh, environment, so it's completely isolated from your from your actual uh, OS. Uh, the most important thing is the fine-grained instrumentation or, or the API that we design using the uh, framework, okay? Uh, and then uh, we have a small little chat, uh, 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 chart down there to show us that uh, what kind of uh, CPU architecture and OSs and file that we actually support, okay? And uh, one fun thing that uh, we almost didn't talk about is the uh, OS profiling. So you can profile your OS, you can profile your your settings from what kind of address space and what kind of uh, of uh, heap memory size that you want your entire emulations to start and, 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 and to run with. So. There are some similar project. Okay, there are some similar project that actually runs on the uh, uh, there, there are, uh, runs on the uh, the uh, semi framework uh, design. Okay, so uh, one of the closest we we don't call it competitive, but one of the closest solutions that we have in the industry it's a uh, uh, QMU user mode. Okay, it's a tools. Again, it's a tools. It's not. It's not something that you can do instrumentation. So it's not something that a reverse engineer, a hacker would, 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 would like to uh, look at. And they're using a uh, syscall forwarding. Okay. Uh, user con, it's a very early project. And then, uh, they can emulate Unix based uh, OS well, but they are using Go language and, uh, and, 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 and Lua and they are using a uh, syscall forwarding. Okay. Uh, the issue with uh, syscall forwarding, it's not a bad idea when it comes to design. But the only thing is uh, if you need to use a uh, syscall forwarding in your framework or tools, you need to be in the same host. That is not a complete uh, I, I, I saw thing. So later when you look at the API level that we have, then uh, you will know it's totally different. Uh, that's the reason why I don't put it here. So the reason why we don't put a MISM is that the nearest, 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 uh, the nearest uh, 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 framework that can go very near to us is uh, actually Bini. Uh, uh, FireEye, uh, Speak Easy, and uh, Zilos. Of course, a uh, Bini and uh, Speak Easy. It's very uh, Bini. It's it's running on uh, Bini is running on uh, Golang. Okay, I not to say I, I'm not here to say Golang is bad, but I don't use it. All right. Uh, Speak Easy is on uh, Python, but they are limiting on uh, Windows. And uh, uh, Zilos is on uh, Linux only. So a lot of uh, instrumentation when it comes to uh, things like UFI, MBR, okay, uh, cross platform and, and cross uh, cross uh, 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 architectures uh, uh, support. Okay. We don't have any near to Chilling's uh, 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 similar solutions. So that is the reason why it keeps us uh, pretty much a unique in this uh, entire uh, industry. So 
uh, like what I mentioned just now, the framework design. So the framework design, it's uh, what we wanted to do. So we, we, we are very focused on the instrumentation. So when we mention about the instrumentation, is the instrumentation is designed for cross-platform and cross-architecture. So you can use the same API for different OSs. That is what we always uh, uh, have a design in mind. And uh, we're going to have a... Where chilling is under development. So... Oh, you're talking about the symbolic execution. Okay, fine. So, uh, where am I? So, the, the, the entire idea is uh, we hope we hope uh, more people will be able to develop more tools. Okay, more tools on top of Chilling Framework, which we really have a couple right now. So, uh, uh, those guys, those folks from uh, Sentinel One already put the uh, put up a uh, uh, they contribute. Mostly every piece of code for UF, UEFI uh, emulator and they build a faster track on top of uh, chilling. Then uh, we have a uh, file insight that they build a, a, a tool stack for this, uh, this uh, McAfee uh, file insight tools. And then uh, we have uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, VAC emulator. Okay. So the, the, these are the tools that uh, they are built on top of our chilling framework. And uh, of course, you can build a, a malware sandbox, a CDF software, a, a binary fuzzer, a, a IoT emulator on top of the uh, entire framework. So when we design, we are, we, we, like what I said just now, we don't have, we don't have an idea of designing a tools because there's enough tools in the industry. So we wanted a framework that you can easily build your tools on top of the entire framework. So I mentioned instrumentation a couple of times. Did somebody just sync? Okay. Uh, can we just mute the mic? Whose mic is that? I don't know. Uh, well, he don't have mic, so I don't know. Okay, anyway, never mind. Okay, uh, when it comes to instrumentation, okay, so we, we, we created a very, very simple, we created a very simple uh, uh, a chart to, 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 to explain the instrumentation. Okay, so for example, if you have a binary and then the binary will execute from A to B to C to D to E to F and then it the binary ends, okay? So this is how the binary runs. But in a lot of times, so just imagine this binary, it's, it's, it's a 10 meg file, it's a 15 meg file, it's, it's, it's 20 meg file, or even a 100 meg binary. So if you wanted to do a, a fuzzing for this binary, 100 meg is not a good way to do fuzz. So with instrumentation, you can always start from any point of the binary you want to execute. So let's say you want to start from B. And then uh, after you, you run from B, you want to order the syscall, you want to order, or order the library functions, and you want to continue with uh, functions D, and then you go with E, and then you end. Okay, so uh, between D and E, you wanted to uh, change the uh, CPU register, and you want to repeat, repeat, repeat over and over again, and, and to dump in the different uh, functions for your fuzzing purposes, for analysis purposes, for whatever purposes that uh, you're looking at. So. Instrumentation will be a proper framework with instrumentation will be able to help you to complete this task, to make your faster faster, to make your analysis uh, easier, and you can stop. Thank you very much. I like that amazing word. And uh, where am I? I? I'm too excited. All right. So uh, that is where you can uh, make your analysis uh, much more easier. You can even save and you know continue tomorrow in, in that kind of uh, situations. Okay. So, uh, instrumentation, API, like what I mentioned just now. So these are the API that, uh, we, we split into uh, different parts. Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, we created a semi complete documentation. You know, people like us, we never do proper documentation and we cannot do proper documentation. Proper documentation up before people that does documents, not, 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 not people like us. But anyway, we, we do have something over there. So, so, and this is an open source project. So if you feel our documentation is not enough, please, you know, help us to complete it. And then, uh, 
we will buy you a coffee if we ever can meet you anywhere on earth all right so uh we we separate the uh we separate the uh, API for, for this uh, interest in instrumentation into a different level. So the CPU level, the, the operating system level, and some of the API is actually cross, cross our section. So some of them are uh, we call it, we, we will put it, we will name it under file system, but it can be in, in an operating system or it can be in virtual machine, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's just, it's just a, a classification, a, a categorization for you to, uh, to, 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 to understand a bit more on how this, uh, how this, uh, 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 instrumentation works. So, uh, for, for the, uh, CPU level, the CPU instrumentation, the CPU level instrumentation, there are things that you can register, you, you can access to the, uh, to the, uh, registers. Uh, you can, uh, up, you can write into the registers during the execution or, or certain part of the executions. Okay. And, uh, there are different hooks that, uh, you can, uh, implement. Okay. Uh, you can hook code, you can hook, uh, address. So let's give, let, let me give you a very short, uh, example. Okay. So, uh, in this code, you can see, uh, we actually write, we are, we are writing to, uh, the register. So, uh, this is one of the test, uh, code that we have in, uh, uh, we, we have in the, the uh, test folder. So, uh, to make sure that every time uh, when there's a commit that it, it, it will check for all these, uh, API. So, uh, we can read from RX, we can write into RX and then all, all RSI, uh, as simple as that. Okay. So this is part of the, uh, this is part of the, uh, and then uh, you can see there are some other APIs that uh, we, we use inside the, uh, we use inside the, uh, the, uh, the code. So, and, uh, for the operating, uh, operating systems, uh, level uh, API, we do have things like, uh, you can read from the memory, you can write into memory, you can search from the memory, or of course, uh, uh stack, pop, and, uh, pushing. Or you can even uh, set, uh, you can replace syscall or set uh, API. So this is a bit confusing. Okay. So I'll, I'll go through these things, uh, uh, slower. In your, in your, in your Linux environment, you do have things like, a uh, set syscall. Okay. And then, uh, you, you do have things like a syscall. So when you are running your, 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 your code, you want to replace the entire syscall. So you can always run a, run, run, run the uh, API call ql.set syscall, uh, your syscall number or syscall name, and then you match with the function that you want to replace with your syscall. So that is where you can, uh, rewrite the uh, entire uh, syscall. So you can do it by the syscall number or, 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 or by name. Of course, syscall num, if you want to replace the uh, syscall number, it always depends on the uh, architecture. So check, check the uh, table. All right. And then uh, we have things like a uh, uh, file system uh, instrumentation. So we have things like uh, uh, you can uh, remap your file to another file inside your host, or you can remap your file, your targeted file to 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 a function. I do believe uh, inside the demo session now uh, we have uh, quite a fair bit of uh, of uh, of example for for a very in depth uh, example. Okay, so I I just uh, go through uh, this part uh, slightly faster. So, uh, so let's say, uh, if you look at the sample code right now, so you have your SS, FS uh, mapper and then you have your U, uh, your, your U random. Okay. So, uh, the U random, you want to make your U random not so random. Okay. You want, you, you want your U random always returned a, a single character and, and not any other, uh, uh, other randomized uh, number. So whenever your code fetch, the u uh, uh slash def slash u random then uh, it only returns one fixed value but not random value but in actual case it should be a random value so this is for your analysis you don't want the binary to get a random value you want to fix the value so this is how you can instrument the entire file system to work according to what you want so uh the virtual machine level so we have this thing called a ql save ql restore uh to save memory to save a register all right uh, uh to save your 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 uh entire execution state okay so the the sample code will be over here so uh you can see uh in uh address uh in this address uh zero x one zero nine three zero then uh we 
we actually call a thing called a safe uh, context. So safe context in here, you'll be saving the CPU context and then uh, the snapshot file. All right. And then at the later stage, you can actually open up the uh, snapshot.bin to restore back the memory and start from certain part of the binary. So this is how the entire thing works. We save the register, we save the, the, the memory, we save, uh, we save the CPU context. And then, uh, during your next execution, you can start from certain part of the binary and you can actually continue from there. And then only you can, you restore the memory, you restore the register, you restore the CPU context, then, and you restore the FD, then you can continue your binary from certain address that you wanted to start on. So you don't have to run the entire binary all over again for your, for, for your next uh, analysis uh, 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 session. Okay. And uh, the last part there will be a uh, 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 debugger. Okay, so uh, we we have built in a quite a fair bit of a debugger. And uh, this is a very good question. Okay, and uh, we will answer that questions uh, later. And we will show it to you uh, on uh, how we do it. But to to cut everything short, okay, the uh, the the fuzzle always depends on uh, not only the speed, and it, it depends on how you fast the binary. Are you fasting a certain section or you want to fast the entire binary? So if you're fasting the entire binary and then compared to fast certain session, using chilling framework could be slightly slower if you fast the entire binary. But if you fast certain part of the file, then our speed will be tremendously faster compared to you use any fuzzle to fast the entire binary. So you, you do the maths. Okay. Then, then you will find out which one is easier and which one is better and which one is faster. Okay. So, uh, and then, uh, the debugger, uh, we have an experimental debugger called QDB. Okay. Uh, developed by one of the uh, contributor that actually supports, uh, reverse debugging. So you can step forward, you can step backward by using the, uh, the, uh, debugger. So it's quite fun, but, uh, it, it, it's still under development. All right. Uh, the, the code is, uh, already there. You you can play play with it. Okay. So that is uh most of the uh the uh, the uh, API in a nutshell. And then uh during the uh, hands on uh demo, you can actually uh uh have a very quick uh uh in depth feel on how does the uh, uh thing works and uh, uh uh with with the IDA Pro and so so and so forth. So. These are the few, uh, 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 demo sessions. Okay. So what you guys can do is, uh, you guys can start to, uh, you guys can start to, uh, prepare. We'll come back to this screen later so you don't have to worry. I just wanted to show you that, you know, what, what, what the entire thing are capable of. All right. So people have been using, uh, this demo is a screenshot only demo. So you don't have to follow a lot of things. Okay. Uh, uh, our Windows uh, support uh, 32 bits and uh, 64. We support a PE file. We, we support a uh, 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 Windows uh, dot, uh, SYS, which is your your Windows uh, system driver. We do have this mechanism mechanism called anti anti debug. The reason why we call it anti anti debug is when there's an anti debug situation exists in the binary file, they will not be able to run because we never implement any anti debug uh, uh, mechanism inside the uh, the entire framework. So, uh, Windows, and then of course, uh, you can build, uh, 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 Fuzzle, which we already covered in the two previous, uh, lab session. All right. Uh, I don't think if, if we have time, then uh, we can cover a bit or else, uh, we will skip this part. Uh, what else? Uh, MBR, uh, analysis. I think, uh, uh, we're going to do this thing, isn't it? The MBR. What? Why, what, why do you put PPT? In, in this slide? Oh, I just go through. I, I asking you whether are you going to do it or not? You know, I'm a fucking old man and then uh, I don't remember what you wanted to do. Uh, so we, then, yeah, we're going to talk about it. No, yes or no? I don't remember. Chen Xu first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, uh, 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 I, uh, yeah. I'm asking a question and then they don't want to answer. How can that be? Okay. So, uh, yes, pretty much, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm not too sure whether you guys want to take a five minutes break, uh, uh, uh or what. 
if not then uh, we can go back to these things then you guys can start preparing uh, the entire environment so do you guys have a uh, linux ready uh if you install chicken in uh, global python um i will will uh, need even to do anything or if you install it in environment uh vector environment you should uh, use this sys uh, dot uh, pass dot uh, pen to add uh, which package uh, ID can find okay uh then we 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 that's then, all right. then, then we can start this. Okay, this is a main function and uh, enter it and uh, F5. You can decompile it. So it will loop for 666 times and uh, in this, in this thing, it, there, there is a function. Uh, it will, uh, validate the, your, your input and, uh, change itself. You can try this. So, uh, by yourself, uh, uh, So if you put the demo in IDA, you will look like uh look these things because uh there there is a uh, structures should be uh fixed. Uh you should uh, import this structure and uh, fix it in, in the here. And finally, it will looks like this. Uh, here it will loop uh, 33 times and uh, it, it will be a huge, uh, huge thing. So if you, uh, if we, uh, um, Should be no, no, there is, should be no password here, there, and, uh, actually you can download this demo from, uh, player on, uh, homepage. It's just, a uh, link I find. Yeah, you can try it. Uh, so, uh, this is a ELF. This is a ELF. And, uh, I, I am, I want to use it, uh, run it in my Mac. So, first, we should load the, uh, Chilean IDA plugin. Uh, you can, you can copy from here. You can start your chicken, uh, extensions, uh, in IDA plugin. And, uh, here, chicken IDA, uh, chicken IDA jar, uh, dot py. You can copy this file, uh, this file to your IDA, IDA plugins, this, this path. Or you can load from File, script file, and then find the script and uh, open it. Okay, so now if uh, if you success, it will show this in the output window. 
OK， 然 we should do a setup to see there have root fs pass and custom script pass. Uh, we want to try try to run this elf. Uh, and it was uh, it is uh, elf sixty four. So we select this root fs. Uh, it is in the uh example root fs. This. Okay, then start. Okay, you can see uh, the ELF will be loaded to chicken. And then we can try, we can try just, uh, or we can, first thing, we can right click and uh, this is the, the pop menu. Uh, you can set up and reload and uh, debug. Uh, this is some debug function. We can try just uh, continue. And it will run. OK, you will see here we uh, it stop and uh, You see, uh, we we have not uh, enter any keys in in this demo. Uh, that's because we haven't uh, uh, we haven't hijacked this uh, STD STD and uh, input something. So chickens will think it will be not. So now we can we should try the chicken chicken ideas uh customs uh uh cup custom uh script. Uh, first, first thing is we can force this, uh, JN, JNZ to JMP. So, uh, it can, uh, jump to this branch. So, we just click this start, uh, restart. And uh, enter the root fs and find the find the script pass and start. Okay, it will reload and uh, continue again. So this time it will uh. Jump to this branch and uh, it will stop. It will stop here. So we can we can see the deep 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 compile, uh, and we can see uh, the programmer will call the function here. Uh, so it will call the value of uh, register RCX. Uh, we can use this will will register to check the value to here. Here we can see the RCX uh, value of RCX is this. 
So we copy this address and uh, we click uh, G. Click G in your keyboard and uh, we can jump to this address. So it, uh, it will be um, jump to a function. And uh, we can decompile this com uh, this function. Uh, yep, yep. It uh, will you can find the rotor f as here. Uh, chicken, chicken example. Then rotor f as then this way. Okay, you can find it. So back to here. This is this is uh, uh algorithm function, and uh, it will uh, uh encrypt the op code, and uh, it will call this function, and then it will uh de uh, it will encrypt this function immediately. So there, there have thirty, thirty three loop. Uh, so I'm lazy. So I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to dump all this algorithm by by myself. So I can I. Want to find a way to get this alg algorithm uh, auto damage. Uh, so check this uh, script. We patch this thing. This is a force force jump, and uh, this is patch the. Or RCX. And you can hook a drug here. Uh, the, uh, you can hook a drug for uh, watch some value or patch the things or um, call some um, IDA Python API. Uh, So anyway, we can we can do this con uh, autodemic. Uh, here, if I delete, yeah, I delete the breakpoint and uh, continue, then will I will get all the algorithm. Okay, you see. Um, there is thirty three loops, and uh, I use the hook hook address to print, um, print this value. Every function size, and uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, address. Uh, and uh, I have renamed this function to verify. Uh, we can we can find this function here. Yeah, you can you can see the, there have seven functions. So we decompile it. Okay, you can see this is Fibonacci, uh, and then this is RC4. And uh, this is just a uh, compile, uh, compare, compare strings, uh, 
something. And uh, this is a CRC CRC thirty two. And uh, this is a XOR. Uh, then this is root thirty. And this is base sixty four. So we get all this uh, uh all this algorithm function, and uh, we can write uh, the reverse reverse code, and uh, you can serve this uh, this challenge. It should be easy. So, any questions? Okay, so take it easy. This, this is the most easiest part in, in, in this lab. So this is about MBI emulation, also known as remote emulation or, or 16-bit emulation, you know, you know the, the remote. Uh, so our agenda, in the first section, we will dive into the team framework. It will take about 10, 10 minutes, and I will show how remote emulation is Im implemented and you will learn the internal design of the Qilin framework. You know, uh, you know how how the how the binary is parsed, how how it's run, and how how the inter how the interrupt is handled. And it's a good start if you would like to become a contributor. And uh, one minute. Uh, and and in the second section, I will show how to solve a CTF challenge with MBR emulation, and uh, it takes about twenty minutes. And, and in this part, I will show how Qin API helps our analysis. So firstly, so, so firstly, the core problem is how Qin emulates a remote binary. In fact, Xwind has talked something about it, but, but we have to dive in, dive deeper. There are two layers. The first layer is loader layer. It will parse a binary and load it into memory. And the second layer is the OS layer. It will implement interrupts. For example, hi.com, yeah, it, 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 you can find this file in examples, um, I think. So, so, uh, the, the, the first layer, loader layer will parse it. <laughs> in fact, it's a memory mesh, so the loader layer only set up the register and load it into memory and tells the uh, operating system layer to emulate, to emulate, uh, from the first instruction here, the mo, the mo instruction. And when the, when the emulator, uh, in, in this case is Unicore, encounters an interrupt here, it will trap into Qin and, and our pattern code will handle, handle this interrupt. For example, this one, uh, 4C00 hex, and it means exit the program and we will stop the emulation. While well, the instrumentation is provided as an API, it is also heavily used internally to implement the OS layer. So that's the basics. Let's see some details. Firstly, the loader layer. Our target binary for remote emulation is MPR file and com file. And DOSXE support is still, uh, is still work in progress. These two files, uh, in fact, are pretty similar. Uh, they are, uh, they are both memory image without any header. So it's extremely easy to parse them. So the loader layer simply set up register and memory map and write the file into memory. But at this time, the disk mesh should be mounted for MBR file. Uh, I will show uh, I will show some core code. Uh, wait a minute. This this one. Yeah. For example, for example, the the BM, uh, MBR file. If it's MBR file, we set the start address to seven C double zero hex. You know, you know that magic number for BIOS. And and we open that file to BS variable. And we and we eight FS mapping here, and and the eighty. The AT is something, is something like, uh, for example, dev SDA. Yeah, it's how BIOS identify, uh, identify disks. And we map the, this one to a QR disk. And then we, we add the memory mic writing and initialize the registers and set up the IP. And so, and then we tell Qin, Qin framework we are ready to run. So that's about the loader layer. And next, and uh, next layer, OS layer. It's a place where implement traditional interrupts for real mode emulation. 
for example, the interrupt the tenth uh, edge equals to forty two hex. It, it is used for reading disk sectors. Uh, in fact, it is implemented with with FS Mapper API. Uh, uh, FS Mapper API uh, it can map any object which implements FS Map object interface to an emulated de device and pass. And the QR disk here, QR disk. Is inherited from FS map object with CHS and LBA support cylinder, header, sectors, and the logical block address. Note, note that we mount MBR file itself in the loader so, so that we can read it and read it later. For example, uh, let's see how mapper implemented here. So, so the core API is it FS mapping as shown just now, uh, just now uh, by X wings. So it is simply, yeah, it's it's extremely simply, yeah, it's it's just a dict, yeah, it is simply a dict, a dict from uh, from QR pass or emulate pass to a real destination. Th this one can be an object object, uh, and this object should implement the this interface or this method. And so after you edit FS mapper, in fact, you, you mount the, this disk to our, our chilling, our chilling framework or our immunity system. And then in, in interrupt, for example, here, I need to int 13. Yeah, in, in this one, in 13, in 1342 hex, we get here. So in order to handle handle this interrupt, we first they read. Oh wait a minute, the the, the register DL is uh, equals to the disk ad index. In in this case, uh, in this case, index six eighty, yeah eighty, and the DSSI register point to address con which contains this address packet. Um, and it is it is a pretty it is a pretty complex drug. Yeah, and it contains the the read the count and the offset and segment which points to the buffer and the logic and the logic block address. So, <coughs> oh, wait a minute. Uh, am I speaking too fast? Hi, X Wings, Mister Law. What the fuck you want, man? <laughs> Okay, so I, I, I will be slow, so, <laughs> so I will be slow, yeah. Uh, here, uh, here's, here, remember, I recall that we, we mount the disk to, uh, we mount the disk, uh, 80 hex here. So, so we will read it, read it here. Yeah, so th this object is a, is a, this is the object we mapped just now. And we call the resectors. Yeah, they, this method look, is located. If he if he talk too if he talk too fast again, I will fire this motherfucker tomorrow. So let me know <laughs> if he talks too fast. <laughs> Let's talk it later. Uh, in this uh, so the resectors is here. As I talk, as I said so just now, it inherited from Kira's F F map object, and 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 it implemented for CHS and LBA support here. And here. So after we get the disk object, <laughs> so so after we get this object, we read these sectors, and we and we read the we read the content to the destination buffer, and we clear the flag, and then we return. So that that's a that's a that's how that that's a typical interrupt. Uh, next. Uh, next we will, uh, next I will show, uh, show how to, show how to solve a city challenge with, with our MBI emulation. So the sample is all, the sample is also from, uh, from Flare 5 and it's, uh, it's Doogie. It, it is located in our repo here. Chilling, oh, sorry. It should be in root FS 8086 Doogie. Yeah, here. Yeah, you can find it here. And uh, it is MPR file. We can we can check that with the root command. Oh, sorry, with file command. Yeah, 
it's a it's an MBR MBR file, and we can and we can have a look. We can have a quick look with QR2. You know, QR2 is the uh is a tool to to, uh, to start some binary quickly without writing a full script script. So as you can see, yeah, it, it runs, <laughs> and you can input some random character, but it will only get some gibberish. Uh, but here, here we can see a tip. Uh, a tip here. February, uh, blah blah blah. This tip, we we need we need to remember this date. And and uh, uh we need. Uh, Mm, and like most and like most MBR file, it firstly uh, it it is firstly loaded into seven C double zero. Yeah, you know that that address and and uh, and it uh, it and it it loads the uh, it loads the uh, the following content. The uh, I mean uh, I mean the content after the first sector to uh, to eight eight double zero to that address and jump to that and jump there. So after you jump, you you execute the the address code, uh, for convening for convenience, uh, as leading to two files and and this is and this is the one starts from, uh, starts from eight eight double zero. So <clears throat> for the second stage, it 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 uh it contains the real the logic we we are interested in. And the logic is, is pretty clear. First, it get current state time by int one a, interrupt one a here. Yeah, interrupt one, interrupt one a, and and it XOR with a string with eight uh eight eight zero nine with that date time. Yeah, yeah, as you can see, it XOR with the uh, the fixed string. In in fact, oh sorry, I I didn't mark that string. Okay, uh. And and then it reads input, yeah. It's that that input here, it read input here. And lastly it, it XOR the input with the with that string. And lastly it initialize the screen and print the, that ask art. So so how cheating watching can do to speed up our analysis and find the key? Firstly we can emulate the binary. Yeah, that that that's the basic thread. And we can hope interrupt like into one a to give the program a specific time. Remember that date here. Yeah, remember that date. Yeah, we we can give we can give we can we can hook the interrupt to return this fixed date, and and we can dynamic memory rewrite, and and we can automatic test every key with partial execution and snapshot API, and the crack process can be divided into states three stages three stages. And the key of this challenge is not unique, so we have to show every possible one. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so for the first stage, we will get the string XR with the date time. Of course, the date time has uh, has been modified to to this one to that February. And the, in this part, we utilize hook API, partial execution, and FS mapping. And in the second stage, we dump the memory and search all possible keys. It only utilizes memory API. And and in the third stage, uh, and in the third stage, uh, we utilize Hoop API, particular memory API, and and the most importantly, snapshot API. I will show how how that how that makes the process easily. So for the first stage, uh, so the first stage, remember this date. Uh, and we have to set date time to February. Uh, it's extremely easy with that with with that API. Let let me show. Here, 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 here. So the first day, we set API in uh zero x one a four. That that's the interrupt number and the a eight and the register age value. And the here function says require time. And and we set it when the interrupt has finished. Here we set it to to that uh to that date, but the, but they use BCD uh, BCD encoding, so we have to do a uh, conversion. Uh, then uh then we then we have to use Q uh, fastest mapper API to emulate the disk. I've I've talked that uh, before, uh, and then we actually program until eight a 
it is eighteen. Where here? Yeah, just before we read input. And and at this time, and the, uh, at this time, we have XOR with the string. We have XOR the string. Yeah, you see. And at this time, we dump the memory at the eighty-eight zero uh, zero nine for the next stage. And the second stage, with uh, after we dump the memory, we use some algorithm to guess key size and search possible keys, with the assumption that all the results should be printable as since uh, it's likely an uh, SCART. Yeah, this is guys, but. But you know, you know, you when you do some CTF change, you always, uh, you you always have, you always have to use use some guess and and that may help you solve the challenge. So, uh, so the algorithm, uh, the algorithm I have I have list here for uh, as a reference. And in the third stage, we will execute into uh, eighty eight uh, eight eighteen and take a snapshot here. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, here, yeah, we uh, we stop at with eight eight eighteen. Here, yeah, we take a snapshot here, and then we we won't we won't read input. We 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 fill the input on the stack directly. Wait a minute. Here, we write the key to the eighty seven f four hex. Here, yeah. Yeah, we directly read the read input to the head, to the stack, and then we we jump. When I then we skip the input reading, we start from eighty one B here. Yeah, we we totally skip this function, and then and then we we run the following the following the following code and the shoot and the shoot the key. So uh, so uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the uh, snapshot API, um. So we can we can test every key quickly. So I will show. <coughs> uh, I will show the 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 script. Yeah, they, this is this is second stage already. And 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 now it will test every possible key. Here, for example, that that's one possible key, uh, and and the and the rest time is for question and answer. But before that, let let me say it for X wings. Uh, yeah, give us a star. <laughs> give us <a> star. <laughs> yeah, here, give us a star. GitHub.com, Kill framework and the cheating. Yeah, give us star. And now, and now it's the question and answer time for the for the whole live. If you have any question, um. oh, you finished my part. Cool. Yeah, and and I back I back and I back start for you. So I gotta check: is there any increase of star or not? If we don't have star, you are doing a bad job. <laughs> So, so no any questions? Okay. I guess we are all good if there's no questions. Or you want him to repeat the mm -hmm. entire thing again? Uh, sorry. Uh, I can make a question uh, about uh, quilling in general. Okay. Go Should. ahead. Okay. Um, I think so is uh, uh, quilling uh, is uh, based on uh, uh, unicorn that uh, uh, right now uh, is quite old. Also, the if they are trying to push out uh, the version two point zero, but uh, uh, I think uh, it it will take uh, maybe years before uh, the they will be able to push it uh, and uh, my question is uh, you think uh, uh, this uh, uh, limitation would uh, um, slow 
the develop of uh, Quilling, especially on uh, new feature from a new architecture, like from uh, ARM64 uh, or uh, things like that. I don't really understand your questions. Are you saying uh, when Unicorn version 2 comes up, will it, will, will it affect us or what? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm asking uh, uh, if uh, if you think uh, that uh, uh, the fact that Unicorn don't implement uh, a new uh, processor uh, features uh, would uh, slow down quilling, uh, uh, developing uh, or uh, usage uh, on uh, binary on binaries uh, that is being compiled uh, for new ARM, uh, for example, for new ARM architecture that use a uh, uh, instruction that is not implemented in the Unicorn. The, the the thing the thing with a uh, unicorn is the thing with a uh, unicorn it's a uh, you know unicorn it's unicorn team is our team our team is unicorn team so there shouldn't be any issue on the speed the features the functionality or, or whatsoever I mean if you dig the history of a uh, 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 chilling framework and unicorn engine basically we are the brothers with different um, you you know what I mean? Yeah, brothers okay. with different mother. You know you you know what I mean? Yeah 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 yeah. So yeah, we we are, we are we are still developing a a unicorn too. Uh, the only thing is uh we have some uh we are, we are still not happy. We are still not very happy with the uh current unicorn two version that uh that we have. So uh that is the reason why. We are not pushing it to the public yet, but hopefully we will solve all the uh, technical issues uh, within a couple of weeks or uh, even a couple of months. Then uh, we can push, uh, we, we, we can push it out and, uh, you guys will enjoy the new CPU instruction set and, uh, and, and, uh, whatever things that, uh, we wanted to, uh, to, uh, share with you guys on the uh, new uh, framework. In fact, we have these slides. Which uh we didn't show you guys uh oh that future slide yeah sorry I forget yeah you you are one you are one asshole <laughs> don't fail me <laughs> okay uh 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 can you guys see the screen yeah 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 so, I see I see yeah I see. yeah 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 so so uh uh we we're gonna force queen we're gonna force queen uh to uh to uh make sure that the unicorn two is uh ready as soon as possible uh we are we we are, we are on the technically we are almost finished and uh we are we are on the uh, testing uh, stage right now and uh the next level is uh we wish we can bring in an uh, android uh uh java bytecode of course, uh, to complete the iOS uh, emulation, one of the uh, challenges for iOS emulation it's uh, the ARM64 for the current uh, uh, Unicorn engine. It's not that good yet. So uh, uh, <laughs> that is one of the things that are stopping us. And of course, uh, we do hope we can support uh, Mac OS ARM64 version. Uh, we need more robust uh, Windows uh, emulation. We might introduce Wine or 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 or, or Sigrin or whatever into the uh, entire equations. Uh, smart contract from uh, Master Wu is almost done. So uh, we might be able to see a smart contract, uh, uh EVM smart contract, uh, uh, EOS smart contract, uh, emulation plus instrumentation plus fuzzing real soon. Uh, one of the things that I always have in mind, which we never do it yet, it's uh, the MCU emulation. So, yep, the, the, these are the few things. Uh, it's a community project. We don't have any private version or public version. We only have one version, which is on the GitHub. So, uh, please join us, uh, contribute your code, you know, uh, uh, make, make pull requests. That will be the biggest uh, help for us. And uh, yeah, we have so many thousand work, but we have limited resources, human resources. Yeah, 
yeah, you you can see there's only three of us over here. So yeah, our, our our GitHub me. page. <laughs> our, our, our GitHub page, uh, our documentations, uh, our Telegram group. Uh, and uh, hello, Amy. Oh shit, Amy sent me a private message and then she said, Maka hi. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, any more questions before uh, we go to sleep? It's like 1.43, uh, man. No, normally I sleep at 10 o'clock. I am finding how Unicorn work with QMU in cheating framework. You know, QMU is a fork from QMU. Uh, Kimio, Kimio 2, um, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but you also, Kimio has a Python binding. So, uh, so Chain Framework, you that binding directly. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> hey, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> what? What the hell? Did I miss something? <laughs> oh, I still sharing my screen. All right. What is that? Greeting what? from Europe. Oh yeah. Anybody from Amsterdam can send me some wheat. Like to China. <laughs> somebody so, oh. Huh? huh? Okay, go 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 ahead. Okay, well, what is that? I want to ask how Unicorn books with QMU in... Uh, what, what? Yeah, that's a tuple. Yeah, you're right. That's a tuple. It should be... uh, It should be chilling. Yeah, I mean this one. Yeah, this is a tuple. It should be chilling. And and that's a, that's a CD Chinese of <laughs> of Mr. Law. <laughs> yeah, it should be... It should be chilling. And it is a, uh, uh, it is a uh, old, it is an old, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. It is, uh, an old monster of China. Animal. If you don't know how to, if you, if you don't know how to describe it and why you keep on talking. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know how to describe that, but simply, yeah, it is, it's chilly. <laughs> I don't know actually why we named the project Chilling. It's kind of mystery. We we started a project and then uh, I just simply put in a name and I spell it wrongly, and I ended up buying the domain name with a wrong Chinese spelling. And uh, this is how we ended up with uh, Chilling. So there's no special meaning for it. It's not my girlfriend's name or my ex girlfriend's name. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about that. So, oh, key is the unicorn engine problem junk emulation or Q uh, in fact, the unicorn uni engine, uh -huh. the unicorn engine is provide the instrument, uh, the, 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 the instruction emulations and, uh, well, actually, really? you can't, you can put it this way. Unicorn engine is a stripped down version of a QEMU. And we built, and uh, Unicorn Engine is CPU awareness, and we built OS awareness on top of Unicorn Engine. This is, this is how you can imagine the whole uh, uh parent son relationship. Okay, cool. Any more questions? Whatever, no one cares how chilling is pronounced, even for Chinese. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just a name. Uh what what cube are you talking about, Hank? Are you talking about the hardware cube that we used to have it like 
45 years ago in the previous Hack in the Box. So you can still talk with us in Telegram. Yeah, join our Telegram group. Uh, if you have uh, any more questions, uh, if you have any more issue, uh, you can always raise the issue. Uh, if there's no more question, uh, we will pass the floor back to uh, Hang in the Box. Okay, I am Hang in the Box, so what the fuck? <laughs> How is uh cheating finance? We got no money. There's no there's no such thing as finance. Yes, so oh, we, 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 we do have a donation project, but it's not. We, we do have some donation, we receive some, uh, uh, we do sell some stickers, uh, uh, t-shirts, you know, USB thumb drive or whatever. We do this in our work time. <laughs> and All right, buddy. free time. Alright, buddy, I think you can take over and, uh, we can have the, uh, room close. Okay, are we done? We are good. Like, almost on time. A question. There's still a question in the slider. What about what question? The lead VMI? Uh, KVM? Well, yeah. KVM is an emulator, so they don't do instrumentation, we do. We need instrumentation level, so that, that, that is the different issue. Okay, that's all. All right. Well, thank you very much to our speakers and thanks very much for all the participants. Uh, feel free to continue the discussion uh, or questions and other subjects on our Discord server. And if you'd like, you can also uh, join the Brella side for networking related activities. I uh, thank everybody a lot and see you next time. Have a great day, evening, night, whatever. <laughs> Night, definitely night. Yeah, I'm quite <laughs> <Night, night. laughs> Okay, dokie. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. bye. bye.